Amazing Spider-Man issue number 28 has arrived, and I have to admit, I have some feelings about this issue. So let's just recap the previous issue like we always do. In the last issue, Doc Ock unveiled his new sets of arms called Ottoys, which could separate into mischievous little gremlin-like creatures that could just go around like individually. Or just form his own like separate appendages. Like his own, he still has the arms. They can still form the arms, which was really weird, but not the weirdest part of this whole series. As ridiculous as this might sound, these autos are very dangerous. Ark damages his former arms with the Optoids. The former arms then went to Jonah's apartment, causing distress for Jonah, who's just looking at the damaged arms. It was really weird. But not as weird as this comic is not a gift. Jonah brings the damaged arms to Oscorp, seeking assistance from both Peter and Norman. There's a brief disagreement between Norman and Jonah as Osborne initially hesitates to repair the dangerous arms because they're Otto's arms and they try to kill him. However, Peter manages to convince him and eventually Norman agrees to lend a hand to help the arms. Meanwhile, we shift gears to a conversation between Ark and a surprisingly resurrected Craven. I mean, Sergei Kravenov, not his son who was actually taken over from. I'm a bit puzzled about Craven's return and as his son had actually taken over his legacy, he had been Craven for years. And when you actually saw Craven, that was actually his son who looked exactly like him. If anyone knows the details about this resurrection, please tell me because I'm confused. The conversation revolves around Ark's satisfaction with his new arms and his dismissal of Craven, declaring he no longer needs his help. It's nothing. Back at Oscorp, we witnessed Jonah's frustration with the treatment of the arms, leading to a confrontation with Peter. Jonah reveals that after the events of Amazing Spider-Man issue number 900, the arms have returned to his apartment multiple times, becoming his unexpected friend slash pet slash whatever this weird relationship is. It's really bizarre. The arms are kind of like Jonah's dog or pet. Re really, I don't need this. After that, we turn this into Norman, working on the arms, but as soon as he finishes the arms and powers them up, the arms alert him that the building is under attack. None other than Hutto Octavius is attacking. Ak then walks in the building, strolling like he owns the place, employing his odd toys to infiltrate the building, disabling security systems in the process. I really can't help to mention that Otto's dialogue feels like something straight out of a Saturday Night cartoon villain. Since Superior Spider-Man, he's kind of regressed as a character and he underwent a lots of growth during those days, but now he's just less interesting as a character and everything he says is just kind of droll, kind of bland. Which is exactly the reason why I think that Ma was making him the Superior Spider-Man again. Because they kind of realized that there's not much to do with Doc Ock after the amount of growth he's kind of underwent as a pure Spider-Man. Then Spider-Man and his robotic psychic, Bug, confront Ock. Unfortunately, Bug is swiftly destroyed and defeated by Ock. Otto proceeds to overpower Peter, boasting about the superiority of his technology. The generic dialogue becomes a bit overwhelming at this point. Norman intervenes in his obnoxious gold goblin armor, only to have his system compromised by Ock. Norman then drops to the ground, he's out for the count. Otto then drops Peter and grabs a hold of Norman, driven by his memories of what Norman did when he was the Goblin King during, I'm guessing, Superior Spider Man. I think this is what this is referring to. Hopefully, I'm right, because we already know that Otto is coming back as Superior Spider Man, so he might remember, which is interesting. The only thing memorable is the ending, and you know, this, this is the end. In conclusion, this. Issue took a very similar tone. It's just weird, <laughs> honestly. This I complain about like how issue number twenty-seven is weird. I even use that for like a title, I'm pretty sure. But it's just not really fun. I know it has like fun energy, but the issue is not fun. The characters are starting to feel more like caricatures rather than well-developed individuals with death. With a light-hearted tone it's can be enjoyable for like a spider-man story but it just kind of loses me because most of the dialogue is just like nothingness it's not interesting none of these characters have that much chemistry with one another it's kind of just like floating downhill in my mind the most memorable thing about this issue 
is the ending. I, I just don't really have enough hope for this series. Hopefully it gets better. Thank you all for tuning in and I hope to bring you a more satisfying comic book review or whatever the heck this is. Anyway, stay tuned and I'll see you guys in the next video.